and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the sermon part of RT Ministries. Uh, this week the sermon comes from Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. And it's, uh, the title is Be Who You Are. And the text is about the salt and the light. Um, I think sometimes in, in life it's easy to forget us as Christians to... Uh, Remember why we're here and to remember that uh, to be who we are out there. Sometimes we uh, sink back a little bit into the old life. And, and, you know, when a person is saved, they have a new, they have a spirit of God comes inside and they're, re, they're born from above. They're born again and they're changed, but they still have, we still have some bad habits. And sometimes we get back into them bad habits. But Jesus here reminds us to be salt. And light, and I think it's a good and important reminder for any Christian out there to be salt and light. And um, I think instead of fourteen, we're going to start with thirteen too. Um, verse thirteen, Matthew five thirteen says, "You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's foot." All right, Jesus likens us to the salt of the earth. He says, you, me, all the Christians out there are salt of the earth. And salt does do a couple different things. One, it preserves things. And, you know, certainly Christians has, has a preservation in society and certainly preserve the kingdom of God by spreading the gospel. But I think this text more, you know, when salt is added to something, it changes the flavor of something. It changes it for good. And this is what... God does, didn't save you to uh, just give you a ticket to heaven and, and that's it. He saved you to do his will in this earth. And he saved you to do the good works that he has laid out for you to do. And when, when we live in this world after we're saved, we're supposed to be salt in this world. And I, I think Jesus has the most here in mind is, is a part where salt changes the flavor. You know, salt changes the flavor of food. We're supposed to change <laughs> Uh, not really society in general, but for the kingdom of God, we're supposed to bring change out there. You know, we salt things with the gospel. When, as soon as you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the true gospel, repentance, turning to him, you know, you change things for good out there. You can change people forever out there. You can take people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You know, and he has this in mind. He said, if you're the salt of the earth, but then he adds, if the salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? In Jesus' time, they had the Dead Sea there, and a lot of their salt was contaminated. And it really wasn't good for anything. You know, if you have salt for food, and it's contaminated, and it's got so much contaminants in it, you can't taste the salt. It's really good for nothing but to be thrown down. You know, what are you going to use it for? It's good for anything but to be thrown on the ground and walked on. He said it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's foot. So if you're not being salt out there, if you're not spreading the gospel, if you're not living like you should, if you blend in out there, you have become useless to God. You become useless for the kingdom of God. But if you are being salt and you are changing things, you're spreading the gospel, you're, you're living a life that glorifies God, your mind is where it should be, your heart is where it should be. You know, Again, if you're spreading the gospel and you're changing things out there, people are changed because they know you're not. You don't blend in so much that nobody ever notices you're even a Christian, you know. And, and a word of warning, if you do blend in, you're not, you're hiding Jesus Christ. You can't live a life glorifying to God and not change things out there and not, so people can see a difference in you. If people can't see a difference in you, then you're probably not saved. You probably have not been born again. Because if you're born again, it's, a, it's an immediate process. As soon as somebody's born again, they're that quick, they're a different person. And people will notice. They can't help but notice. You cannot meet the God of this universe and not change. It's impossible. So number one, be the salt. Go out there and change things. Like salt, when you throw it on food, if you put too much on food, it changes it for good. You can't take it back. It's already, it's too salty. It's just, just like us, when we go out there, you sh things should never be the same. If you, if People that meet you should see something in you that changes them. Whether good or bad, whether they reject it or not, isn't really the issue. It's just you being salt out there. Make a difference out there. Be who you're, 
Again, the title of the sermon is Be Who You Are. You're supposed to be. So he saved you to go out into the world to show people Christ, to preach the gospel. Um, verse 14. He goes from salt here and out to light. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. So number now he's liking us to light. Now, according to the Bible, every single person out there is dead in their trespasses and sin and they're in darkness. They're like, almost like walking zombies. They're just dead. They don't understand. They're spiritually dead. Our spirits have been revived. We have new spirits and the light of Christ is inside of us. Now we need to spread the light, to be the light in this dark world out there. And then that day, a city on a hill can't be hidden because we're used to uh, uh, night lights and, and street lights and all that stuff now, and cities are so light even at night. But in that day, if you had a city on a hill, that, if it was lit up, you could see it for miles around. It would stick out. And that's the same thing Jesus wants you to do when you go out in this world. He wants you to stick out. You can't hide. And we're going to get into that next. You can't hide. If you're really bearing the light, people are going to see it from a long ways away. Nobody will be the same when they come in contact with you. Unless, of course, you're hiding it. And a city cannot be hidden. And if Jesus Christ is in you, he cannot be hidden. The more Christ comes out in your life, the more you become like Christ, the more the world's hatred will hate you. Because it never liked Jesus when he was here. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. <laughs> Again, if you're not showing your light, you're hiding them. You're like the light. Somebody is buying a light, which doesn't make sense, and putting a basket over it. They bought the light to let the light shine. Jesus saved you to let the light shine. Not to hide it. 15. Nor do people light a, light a lamp and put it under a basket. So if you have a lamp and you light it, you don't immediately cover it up. You light it to light the room up. Same with Jesus when he saved you. He lit you up, so to speak. You have the Spirit of God inside of you. You have the light inside you. You have to go walk out into this dark world. And this, the world is satanic. The world is controlled by Satan. The whole world is under the demonic influence and you are supposed to be the light of the world. You need to walk out in that darkness, spread the true gospel of Jesus Christ, repentance and coming to Him. Repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ. That should be spread everywhere and telling people to repent of their sins. Pointing out the darkness. The Bible says to expose it. Expose the, evil, the works of darkness. Once you expose it, then give them and condemn them, then give them the light of the gospel. Give them the the preserver, so to speak, Jesus Christ, so they have a chance to be saved. So you don't buy, you don't put a lamp, light a lamp, and put it under a basket. You, but you you put it on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. So when somebody actually lights a lamp, they put it somewhere where it actually throws out the most light. Same with you. Go out into the world, let your light shine. Now it doesn't say. Muster up enough strength to let your light shine. It says, let your light shine. The light's already inside of you. All you got to do is let it shine. Let, <laughs> let what's inside of you come out. And you do that through reading the Bible, obeying the Bible, spreading the gospel. That's letting light shine. Correcting error with truth. That's letting the light shine. Telling people who Jesus Christ is. That's letting the light shine. It's already in there, but let it, let it out. 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. This is why you let your light shine. Let your light shine before others so they may see. You let your light shine so people can look at you and, last part of this verse, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That's why you let your light shine so people will give God glory. If you let your light shine, people can't help but give God glory because they see a difference in you. They attribute it to God. They give God glory. They don't have no other, they have no other uh, answer for it other than giving God glory. And we should live in a, if you're not living in a way that gives God glory, you, either need, you need to repent of it and turn, turn to Christ, repent of your sins, and come, let your, be salt and let your light shine. Um, John 15, 8. Um, says, By this my Father is glorified. That's the reason we let our light shine. That you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You know, if you don't bear any fruit, you're not his disciples. 
You know, when it says, it's by this my Father is glorified, and that should be your main reason for living. If you want to know why you're living, when you're saved, you want to know why you let your light shine? It's to glorify God. That's your whole purpose in life. That's all our purpose in life is. And he gets glorified that you bear much fruit. Bearing fruit is, is uh, if you abide in the vine, you'll bear fruit, right? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. All the righteousness in this dark world, the satanic world, the more righteous you are, the more fruit you bear to God and the more, the more you glorify God. Then, in other words, and it proves you're his disciple. Jesus said, if, if you really love me, obey my commands. Bearing fruit proves you're his. If you never bear fruit, ever bear fruit, then you're not his. It proves that you aren't his. You know, I don't care who you are, even if you're in disobedience, if you're a Christian, you're going to even be bearing raisins. But it's going to be bearing something. You're going to be bearing fruit. You can't help but bear fruit if the Holy Spirit's inside of you. If you've hid the light, and you're, you're not bearing fruit, but you're bearing raisins, and you're not bearing very much, and repent and start bearing fruit and being who you are. Be who you are out there. There's plenty of verses in the Bible that uh, back this up. Ephesians 5.8 It says, For at one time you were in darkness, you were part of that dark, satanic, evil, unrighteous, ungodly world out there. You were part of it at one time. It says, but now you are light in the Lord. That means you, he, Jesus took you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Now you have all the light. God is light, right? The Bible says he's light. Jesus Christ is light. He's inside of you. You are the light in the Lord. And then it says, walk as children of light. And the walk means live your life as children of, the light, children of the light. Live a righteous life. Careful how you live out there. Careful. People are watching you all the time, Christian. People are watching you. Live like you belong to the Lord. Live like who you are. Be who you are. Um, Philippians 1.11 uh, says, Filled with the fruit of righteousness. And righteousness is a fruit. Live a righteous life. Live a life so people cannot bring anything up against you. If somebody hated you, live a life to where they would have a hard time bringing anything up against you. That's, if, you, if, if you live a life where nobody could, could uh, throw any dirt because you live a, a life, a true righteous life, then, then you're in the right spot. If you're living a life where nobody can bring anything up to you, good for you. That's the way you should be living. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if you abide in me in John 15, you've got to abide in Christ and the righteousness. You don't have to bear the fruit. He'll bear the fruit through you. All you have to do is abide in him. Then it says, to the glory and praise of God. And again, everything is for the glory and praise of God. 1 Peter 2.12. Just keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. So keep your life, your conduct is just everything you do in life. Keep it honorable among the people outside of the, the people in the darkness. Keep your life honorable in front of them. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, and they will, if you're a Christian, they're going to they're gonna look close at you and some, some people will lie against you. Some people will bring everything up they can against you. But if you live an honorable life and get with them, that they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Even if they lie against you, even if they bring things up, they see your good works and glorify God on the day of visitation. Even, even people who are damned will give God glory because his people live the life they should have lived. They will give God glory one day, right? Jesus said every knee will bow to him one day. Make it so the outside world has nothing that they can bring up against you. And even they, on the day of his visitation, will, glor will glorify God because of you and the way you lived. It will all be brought up against them. They'll be brought up for, you know, for the glory of God because of the way you lived. Be salt and be light. Christian, be who you are. You don't have to, be, you don't have to muster up somebody. You're, if you're saved, if the Holy Spirit is inside of you, all you've got to do is let it shine. Be the salt. Let it shine. How are, how are some ways you can let it shine? 
Well, certainly be obedient to the Word. Everything you know, you should be studying the Bible. Everything you know, be obedient to it. The biggest way to be light in this world, keep your righteousness, live a righteous life out there. And everybody knows what that means. I don't have to get too deep into that now, but everybody knows what that means. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell people the true repentance or God, faith in Jesus Christ, turn from your sins. There's only one, one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Through all the garbage that's being taught out there, you need to get through all that and spread the light. And then salt everything. Change it for the good. Salt and light. Be salt and be light. And if you're not Christian, a word of warning, don't hide them. If, you're hide, if you've been hiding them for years and years and years and years, then here, listen to me close. You're probably not saved. Just like a, a, a city on a hill can't be hidden, if you have Jesus Christ inside of you, you can't hide him for very long. He'll come out. He'll come out. And if you're hiding him forever, again, you're not saved. But Christian, if you're, if you're scared to talk to people, you need to move on and be who you are. Be who you are. Be the light. Talk about Jesus Christ. Be obedient to what he tells you to do. Be led, walk. If the Bible says keep in step with the Spirit. That means... The Spirit is moving all the time, and every day when you wake up, there's good works laid out for you. Just keep in step with them. Be open to it. That's how you keep in step with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the idea behind the Greek being filled is a, is a sail of a boat. Being filled with air and pushes it along. The Holy Spirit will push you along. Be filled. Be the salt and be the light. And you can change the world for Jesus Christ. And you build yourself heavenly rewards, which... You can look forward to it on the day you die. And one more way to glorify God is, you know, I'll end with this. There was a gal I, I talked to that her husband died, but she just fell to pieces. Now, and she was claiming to be a Christian. I don't know if she is or not, but is that glorifying God? You know, everything you do in life should be glorifying God, whether it's through a death in a family or a, job loss or major, maybe, maybe you're going to die. Maybe you got the news that you only got a few months to live. Whatever happens in life, you're supposed to glorify God. And this woman was not glorifying God. She was just showing that she held her, her husband too high. And she could not deal with life without him. Look, if you're going to be light to this world or salt, then be different. That's how you be light to this world. And this lady, you know, and you, whatever happens in life, Deal with it in a God-glorifying way. Give God glory. That's the best way you can be salt and light, if you give God glory. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye.